In just a few hours from now, we're going to know what the FOMC decides regarding rate cuts. This is one of the most important days in the market, if not the most important day for all of 2024, because it's going to chart the course of what's going to happen with the stock market and crypto over the next year or so, or at least the next few months. We'll get an idea of how aggressive the Fed's going to be with cutting rates and what that says about the broader economy. And so there's a lot of theories as to how this is going to play out. As of the making of this video, we're just about 10 hours away from um, likely rate cuts. And you know, the reason why I'm talking about it deterministically is because there's a, literally a 100% chance being forecast by the CME group, Chicago Mercantile Exchange, um, with a 63% chance of a 50 basis point rate cut and only a 37% chance of a 25 basis point rate cut. Now, I think that personally, a 25 basis point rate cut makes the most sense given that unemployment has remained relatively steady around the four point, uh, I think it was rather 4.1 or 4.3%, somewhere around there level. And inflation is down to around two and a half percent as a rate of change. So it has been declining fairly well um, as the Fed has wanted it to. And we do have an election coming up in just under two months. So I do feel like there's a fairly good chance that we will see just a 25 basis point rate cut, but we could see more. and that could be concerning if we do. So I wanna talk about how rate cuts are likely to affect the market tomorrow and for the next few weeks and months going forward and you know all aspects of the market, kind of what to expect. So this is crypto simulation theory. I'm the Gaussian Snake. Nothing in this video is to be considered financial advice. Please like and comment and subscribe to this channel if you like the content and join my Telegram group for free, The Snake Pit. So let's get started. This is the S&P and the two week time frame, and you can see that we are right now holding the bull market support band. My definition of a bull market support band is the Gunner exponential moving average band. We are holding it, we are touching it, but we are holding it. Gaussian channel is starting to squeeze and turn concave up. It's generally a pretty bullish sign. And I wanted to take a look at some under the hood indicators to get a sense for what might be likely with the S&P, irrespective of what's going on tomorrow. So you know, rate cuts are kind of a big deal, I think, and definitely will affect the perception of the market. But more than that, we should look at existing indicators. So I wanted to start off by looking at the two week reverse Chan day price momentum oscillator. I normally look at this with Bitcoin, but I wanted to point some things out about it. It is currently in a downtrend. OK, being in a downtrend doesn't mean that price can't go up. It just means that the overall direction is down. So that's something to just kind of understand. Doesn't mean it can't pop back up. There's been plenty of instances where the S&P has. However, the reverse Chandy momentum oscillator hit a level of 83.02, which is a fairly significant level that does not get hit often. In fact, the last time we hit this level was in January of 2018. And this was just following Bitcoin going rolling over into a bear market and the S&P rolled over into its own bear market um, shortly after that. So let's just look at a few other instances where we've hit this level. Okay, we went a little higher than this level in April of 2013, and it didn't really mean a thing except we just kind of cooled off for a little bit and then put in um, some tops a little bit later on, and then price momentum started to drag down, um, and the S&P just sort of you know, flattened out. So this was not very dramatic. This was really long and drawn out um, price cool off that took place, but I mean, you can see that the S&P was more or less putting in higher highs until it wasn't, right? And then it kind of rolled over. So that's another example. Uh, we have another example here in uh, December 2009 and January 2010. And you can see that even though price momentum did drop to around 28.26, we did get another rally that lasted for a few more months before a more substantial drop took place. And you know, then it was just kind of a little bit of difficulty here. 2011, we dropped. So um, you were in a really prolonged downtrend before it reversed course. Okay, we almost hit this level in January 07, and we know what happened after that, right? So we did drop, and the market would get these little rallies, right? There would be these little rallies along the way, but ultimately this was just heading into a recession. Okay, uh, another instance of where we hit price momentum like this was September of 2003, and you can see that we we dropped and then went back up again, and then we experienced a much larger drop into August of 2004. But ultimately, this wasn't anything, this was more like an accumulation phase, right? Interestingly enough, you know, 
Last time we, we hit some pretty high levels, this was July of 1998. We had a drop, then we came back up again to a lower high in March of 99, and then we started to make our way down, but notice that the market was still bullish because even as price momentum gets into a downtrend, price can still be bullish. Just the lower you get on here, the low, and you put in these like lower highs, the higher a chance you have the market eventually is just gonna roll over. And that's exactly what happened. When you get underneath this red, um, the market rolled over into um, what was known as a dot-com bust. And even in dot-com bust, we had a nice pop above, but that was just ultimately a lower high. And then we had this double bottom before we started to get into more of a sustained uptrend, but it really took a while for this to get going again, okay? I'm not gonna keep going over examples of it. This is just one indicator, but it's an indicator that I like on the two week time frame. So it does take a while for the stock market to roll over. So, you know, looking at this formation here, it still seems like the stock market has quite a bit of bullishness left in it before it would encounter a recession based on past trends. But it does seem like we are starting to head into that longer term downtrend. And I think we could see a recession materialize sometime in 2025 if we were to just look at this one um, single indicator. Another indicator that I wanted to pull up, um, I don't talk about it often on this channel, which is the on-base volume or OBV. This indicator um, is suggesting that we are, we are likely to experience continued upside for the stock market. Again, this is on a two-week time frame, so anything can happen on a day-to-day -day time frame. I'm not too concerned with that. I'm more concerned in the overall trend. And the fact that we're trending up with the OBV is a good sign. Now, if this starts to, if this does start to turn down, like granted, we did put in a high here in July of 2024. If this does start to trend down and price is going up, that can actually be an omen of a coming price drop. So this is something to just watch out for. Right now it looks okay. It's kind of neutral. So I don't really know how useful of an indicator it is at the moment, but it is in a technical uptrend. I mean, if, if you sort of ignore this higher high that um, or, you know, that we printed and we've been kind of chopping around. It, it does look like it's in, you know, a technical uptrend for now. So we'll kind of just real briefly here. Um, I want to also mention that Parabolic SAR did print a bullish dot. So um, that is that is the first bullish dot we printed in almost a month and a half on the stock market. And generally, when you start printing these bullish dots, and we don't know if this is going to remain bullish, of course, this all depends on what happens tomorrow. And until we get to the two week close, we can't really conclude that we'll have a bullish you know, dot. But generally speaking, things do stay bullish once you have a bullish dot. You can see that um, you get, you know, when you have an uptrend in the stock market, it does tend to have some weight to it. So that would be something that we'd like to see is for some continuation of an uptrend. Um, certainly with the bullish dot on the SAR, it does increase the odds. Usually on this channel, I don't look at Bitcoin on lower time frames, but I feel like on a night like tonight, with such important news coming tomorrow, it is worthwhile to analyze Bitcoin on a lower time frame. And so I'm just going to be looking at it going back to late July to now. And what you'll see is Bitcoin briefly went into this red zone. This was a red zone that I had on my channel for a while. Um, that red zone was 45 to 50K. I have since extended it from 42 to 51K. And that is specifically for tomorrow, right? Not necessarily that Bitcoin has to drop to that overnight or anything like that. I don't really think that's likely to happen. But just that I personally feel that Bitcoin is likely to roll over into the rate cut news. Now, of course, it depends a lot on the magnitude of those cuts. I think with a 75 basis point cut, which I don't even, I think, I, don't, I mean, I can't even take it seriously at that point. A 75 basis point rate cut to me would be devastating to the stock market and to crypto. 50 basis point rate cut, I think, would not be great either. I think the market would probably dump into that too. Where I'm a little bit on the fence is if we get my expectation, which is a 25 basis point rate cut, uh, would the market roll over? I think it, I still think that it will. I'm actually going to take off the bull market support ban on uh, the, the Gunnar EMA bull market support ban on the four hour because I don't really feel like it's that useful on this time frame. We could look maybe at something like the weighted logarithmic Bollinger bands instead, just, you know, flat out statistical data uh, overlaid with the Gaussian channel. And I'll actually even turn the Gaussian channel off for a minute. But you can see that we did hit this uh, upper trend line and we failed to break through it. And now we're actually putting in lower highs on the four hour. Now, granted with the Bollinger Band, 
the Bollinger Band is turned up at the moment. It is turning up and fattening. So um, that's something to definitely pay attention to, but that doesn't mean that we're going to see continued upside. I mean, here it was turning up, but it was narrowing, and we actually went down. So um, the fattening just means that there is an increase in volatility, and that's, you know, of course, making this a wider band. So, you know, again, on a four hour time frame, it's really hard to tell exactly what's going to happen, but these bull market and bear market fractals do play out on those time frames. So, are we only going to tap this 42 to 51K region once and that was it? I don't think so. I actually think we're likely to put in a double bottom down here. And I think that will mark the turning point, in my opinion, for Bitcoin. And we're seeing something interesting play out with dominance as well, as Bitcoin kind of um, plays into what I think could be its final dump. Now, again, I don't know for sure. The market could react very favorably and we could pop up above this trend line only to roll over the next day, okay? So this is not a one-day forecast. This forecast that we had down into this red zone, um, I'm going to give it at least like a week or so, like a week or a week or a week and a half, okay? Because you can always have a buy the rumor, sell the news situation where the market flips around into insanely bullish tomorrow and you know, you know rockets off and then dumps like right after. But generally speaking, I do expect that the rate cuts will provide a bullish impulse out of this red zone should we come down into it, like I suspect that we will. I think we won't spend a lot of time down here. And at the very latest, I would expect that we pump hard out of this into um, at the latest, like mid-October. That's that's kind of what I'm thinking. Um, I wanted to look at Bitcoin dominance and kind of see what it's telling us. On a four-hour time frame, Bitcoin dominance is, is basically going parabolic. Okay. So regardless of which direction Bitcoin goes, I anticipate that altcoins are going to are, are not going to be able to keep up. Bitcoin dominance right now is at 58.5%. I've spoken about it at length in previous videos, but I feel like dominance, you know, I, I drew a green zone that originally, if you if you go back to my last video, my last green zone that I drew went up to 63%. Okay. So let's go ahead and um put that in 63%. All right. So I think that in the, and that was based off horizontal resistance levels. We're on a four hour time frame here. Okay, so let me actually just focus on the four hour. So you can see heading in to rate cuts, Bitcoin is looking, Bitcoin dominance is looking very, very bullish. Like it is just, it's on this like bullish path, explosive path. And I think we're gonna see Bitcoin dominance top relatively soon. I don't think it has to happen tomorrow, but it could happen any time between now and quarter four, um, sometime in quarter four. Uh, Bitcoin dominance looks like it's getting ready to blow off on a four hour time frame. So I anticipate this will keep going up. It's just, it just keeps breaking out, breaking out straight to the upside, Gaussian channels, narrowing, concave up. So whatever happens tomorrow, I don't think it's going to be great for all coins either way, not initially. But what is great for all coins is that Bitcoin dominance is, is taking on a parabolic trajectory. Now, if we go to a different time frame with dominance, which I think is one of our most important charts to be looking at as we head into the end of quarter three, you know, yeah, look at the daily time frame breaking out, okay, breaking to the upside. Interestingly enough, at a time when the daily Gaussian is actually concave down, which is bearish, right? So we have a little bit of a, a conflict here, but um, nonetheless, Dominance is breaking out. What about the weekly time frame for dominance? Let's take a look at that. Okay, these are now we're getting into time frames that we look at pretty frequently on this channel. Notice that the Gaussian channel itself is starting to this doesn't look that impressive on the weekly, does it? It is starting to get concave down, right? And fattening. You, you know, this is on the weekly time frame. We have been staying above the median line of the logarithmic Bollinger band, even though we have all these touch points. So who knows? I mean, this could easily curve back up to bullish. I don't think it will. Because if you go back to like what happened last time, we saw that dominance, you know, this is in 2019, dominance peaked for the first time in um, September of 2019. And then it started to kind of roll over. And the Gaussian channel at this time in the rollover process started to go concave down. Okay, we're seeing something similar here, but dominance has been a lot more. Um, 
a lot more resilient than I've even expected it would be. Okay. I don't think that this bullishness though is going to last much longer. So my first stop for a top for Bitcoin dominance, and it could come really, really soon. Okay. It could come as soon as like the next week or two. Like I'm, I'm not ruling that out. I think whenever it is, it's, it's, it's coming relatively soon. So let's just put in 60 even on dominance. I think 60% represents um, my first sort of upper boundary for dominance before I would say the max I could see it going is 63 if it go, if it somehow goes truly parabolic, which it is doing on a four hour time frame and on a daily time frame, arguably as well. But on the weekly time frame, it's kind of hard to call this parabolic. Okay. Look at that parabola line I drew, how insignificant it looks. Um, so yeah, this is like an area of big horizontal resistance. If we go to like a two week time frame, which is my favorite time frame to look at, really look at anything with enough history, you know, look at this Gaussian channel. It is, it is squeezing, it is narrowing, you know, this is bullish. So this is why I said, I don't think dominance is going to top out like this week or even next week. I think dominance will have some more life to it. Just not a lot of life. 60%, I think it's going to provide, res I think there's going to be resistance at 60, okay? I think we're going to hit some resistance. I mean, we're already in a zone where there's some resistance, even at, 50, at the 50 to 60 range. I don't think it's going to be an easy journey to 60, but if we get to 60, I would expect there to be some trouble there, and that could actually be where Bitcoin dominance tops. So we'll have to watch out for this. But again, I, I mean, what this is telling me is if you're Bitcoin heavy in your portfolio, that's probably the best positioning to be in, not financial advice. Um, heading into rate cuts, you know, having like a small percentage of Ethereum and altcoins as a hedge makes a lot of sense, but Bitcoin dominance is going to make it hard for altcoins to be able to keep up. And we can look at kind of the altcoin market and see what's going on there. But, you know, just take one look at ETH Bitcoin and you'll see what I'm talking about. So ETH Bitcoin on the two week, I mean, ETH Bitcoin has been in a bear market for a long time now, and I think it still has further to go. I've been tracking this on the channel for a long time since I started my channel, which was in January. I've been tracking this entire move, including the bounce. And I talked about this long-term trend line that used to be support and it's broken down, right? I said it broke down and probably back test it, which it did, and then break down some more. I drew this red zone back in January. Haven't moved it since. We are now in the red zone. This is between 0.03 and 0.04. Again, this is just based off horizontal support. Nothing really more complicated than that. A little bit of Fib analysis in there as well. Notice that the Bollinger Bands are sort of spilling out. So whenever that happens, you can expect some pretty significant declines. This is not good for the altcoin market. Okay, and this is—it's no coincidence that ETH Bitcoin is collapsing at the same time that Bitcoin dominance is soaring. And I think that ETH Bitcoin is in the process of bottoming. I think it's in the beginning process of bottoming, and I think it will spend some of quarter four carving out that bottom. Okay. You can see that this happened in 2019 where ETH Bitcoin spent a few months. It spent actually six months carving out a bottom in 2019. Now, it could do something similar this time. It could, it could take four to six months for ETH Bitcoin to carve out a bottom. That does not mean that all coins won't find any strength during that time. Look at what happened. I mean, ETH Bitcoin did get a bounce and when, you know, just the bounce meant nothing and went right back down, but it put in a convincing double bottom and then really started to take off. So I'm thinking something similar like that is likely to happen. I think this trend line is going to act as resistance on the next move up. As, and and I, I explained this in my last video that I think it's just the oversaturation right now of layer ones and layer twos and even layer threes in the space. And not all of them are on Ethereum that is, is really eating away at Ethereum dominance and also um, screwing up ETH Bitcoin in the process. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, it's hard to say in the long run exactly what's going to happen with ETH Bitcoin. Is it an oscillator against Bitcoin? Is ETH a bleeder against Bitcoin? I don't know. But, you know, look at how long the Gaussian channel was red the last time. It, see, it turned red this time in January of 2024. Generally, when you turn red, you, you're you more than halfway through your bear market. Turn red here in March of 2019. It didn't turn green again until May of 2021. Now, it's already in a bull market at that time. Generally, what you're looking for is that inflection point. Okay, the inflection point, it's hard to spot exactly where it is. Looks like around April of 2020. Okay, so let's do that again. About a year, right? So January 2024. So if I had to follow this pattern here, and we, and we, we think it's going to be about a year till an inflection, 
we're looking at January or February of 2025 before ETH Bitcoin can convincingly bottom. So what does that mean? That means that 2024 is likely to be remembered as a Bitcoin year all the way to the end. And I think Bitcoin dominance will remain strong probably into quarter four of 2024. But at some point it will start to find some issues just like it did here. Um, you know, August of 2019, September of 2019, right, roughly in there, you know, we were still very well in the bear market for ETH Bitcoin, but it did get a bounce, right? And that was sort of the first sign that things are cracking with Bitcoin dominance. So I think something like that could play out. ETH Bitcoin does have a history of having double bottoms. So uh, just what I would say is that be patient if you're holding altcoins. And if you have a large Bitcoin position, there's no need to rush in and buy a bunch of altcoins right now. You will have time. I think you will have a quarter four as an accumulation opportunity. Part of that might be in the downtrend. Part of that might be in an uptrend. But I think you're looking at an accumulation opportunity as ETH Bitcoin bottoms. I can't, I won't say the same thing for quarter one of 2025. I think quarter one of 2025 um, is going to probably mark a key transition. And it could even start at the end of quarter four of this year from Bitcoin season to altcoin season, actually from Bitcoin year to altcoin year. So I think holding altcoins in 2025 is going to be very profitable. Um, hasn't been very profitable in 2024 other than little pockets here and there. It's been really difficult to find altcoins that outperform. Speaking of altcoins, this is total three minus USDT divided by Bitcoin. So basically altcoin market minus stable coins divided by Bitcoin. So you can think of this as your alt Bitcoin pairs. And what do you see? Doesn't look good, right? We're trending in the lower part of the Bollinger Band, which looks like it's ready to just spill out. I think this red zone will be hit relatively soon in quarter four. And I think that's where altcoins are going to likely find their bottom against Bitcoin. Okay, when did the Gaussian channel turn red last time for altcoins? November of 2019. When was the inflection point? Well, you, I mean, you can argue that the first inflection point to where it turned concave up was somewhere around August of 2020, maybe September of 2020. But really, the bottom didn't happen until almost a year after the Gaussian channel turned um, red, right? So almost a full year. Where did the Gaussian channel turn red here? August of 2023. So we're kind of getting into that zone if we go back to back to the you know one data point we have where it looks like we could be coming in for a bottom here pretty soon. Okay. And yeah, that's my expectation is that all Bitcoin pairs are going to bottom in quarter four. And that doesn't mean that all altcoins are going to be going down against their USD values. If Bitcoin goes on a mania run in quarter four, which I think it will altcoins are going to go up on their USD pairs and some will outperform Bitcoin, but the majority of them won't. And that's why you'll see all Bitcoin pairs go down. And really, like, that's a question you have to ask yourself, which is like, what's more important? My altcoins going up against Bitcoin or my altcoins going up against the USD? I, and that's a personal question that the academic answer is, of course, altcoins against Bitcoin is what matters most. But practically speaking, most people don't value their altcoin portfolio in terms of Bitcoin because they're not planning on holding their altcoins for very long. So you can still make money trading altcoins, even while altcoin dominance is going down. It's just more risky. Okay. But seeing how long the Gaussian channel has been red, I anticipate an inflection point is in the making pretty soon. And that, you know, we'll see a drop probably. I don't think it's going to be as volatile as this one. Somewhere into this red zone. Again, why? Horizontal support, right? It's a horizontal support reason, region. It acted as resistance back here. I don't think we'll breach this. So I think we'll come down into here and that will be the end of that. All coins will bottom against Bitcoin. And that's your that's your loading zone, especially if you're loading up on all coins with Bitcoin. That's your loading zone for all Bitcoins. And, you know, we're going to want to look at this metric against ETH when ETH starts to outperform Bitcoin. Right now, there's no point because we know Bitcoin is outperforming ETH. So this is the metric that makes the most sense at the moment for all coins. So I think regardless of whether we get a 25 basis point, 50 basis point or 75 basis point cut tomorrow. And again, I don't think the other two are going to happen. But, but, you know, we have to at least acknowledge it's a possibility. Well, today, not tomorrow. Um, the market's going to be affected in some kind of way. Right. If we just tune out the rate cuts and look at just pure technicals, which is probably a little naive to do that with something that big, you know, most most of the time. 
I really think all of the time price follows narrative, but you could, you know, what, what came first, the chicken or the egg, right? My personal forecast is regardless of what Bitcoin does in the next couple of weeks, I think quarter four is going to be bullish. If the if the Fed comes in and cuts rates too aggressively, then I will change my forecast to, to bearish. Okay. The Fed comes in with a 75 basis point rate cut, I'm going to flip bearish right away. I'm not going to be bullish, <laughs> not more than maybe like a week or two. Um, that's going to be signaling some pretty serious issues for the economy and the market will not react, react favorably to that, most likely. But a 25 basis point rate cut, I think the market can digest that fairly well. It may still dump. It may still be a sell the news event. And, and you know, Bitcoin might put in that final drop into the 42 to 51K region, the red zone. OK, but I, I think that's just going to represent an opportunity to scoop up some Bitcoin before things turn around. I think ultimately we'll look back at this moment as a bear trap and not a bear market. And I also think that we're, you know, this this is a very pivotal day today, one of the most important days of the entire year and of the cycle, arguably. I think in some ways it's more important even than the having. So whatever Jerome Powell says tomorrow is going to have an impact on the market and what, he, and what they do for months to come. The one thing I think we're going to have to start thinking about if the market, you know, let's say we get a 25 basis point rate cut, the market bounces you know, heading into quarter four, one thing we have to watch out for is a recession, okay? We don't know when it's coming. We just know that it is coming. Will it come in quarter one of 2025? Will it come in quarter two of 2025? Or will it not come until the end of 2025 or even the beginning of 2026? Well, we have no way of knowing that right now. All we can do is look back to history. But I will say this, regardless of whether the cycle ends early or not, I strongly believe that we are going to have a major altcoin season, okay? I think whatever altcoins you hold, as long as they're not complete garbage, like scams or rug pulls or things like that, as long as your altcoins are legit, I think regardless of what you hold, you're gonna experience some significant, potentially life-changing gains if you're patient enough to wait until 2025 or the end of this quarter, quarter or the end of next quarter, quarter four. I think you're gonna see Ethereum go on a rampage in 2025 and it's going to be the most hated rally it always is every single time every cycle people give up on ethereum but then ethereum comes roaring back so i wouldn't fade it it's just bottoming against bitcoin right now so it's not going to do well anytime that soon i think 2025 will be ethereum's year not 2024 and if it does start to do well it'll be near the end of the year i feel like that's the most likely outcome again on its bitcoin pair not its usd pair of course, Ethereum USD will be great if Bitcoin USD is going up, but we're talking about relative outperformance. So I still think the bull market is on. And as long as the Fed doesn't go above 50 basis points with their cut, that will still be my base case. So that said, the only way I'll change my base case is with a 75 basis point cut, which is what senators were calling for. They're out of their mind. They obviously don't understand basic economics, but that doesn't surprise me. They're politicians. So what do you think? Do you agree with my assessment for the market uh, or do you feel differently? Let me know in the comments down below. If you wanna have um, a more spirited discussion about it, or you, you know, if you like Telegram, join my free Telegram, Snake Pit. We have uh, a lot of activity in there talking about the market every single day, multiple perspectives. That's one thing I really like. I think to do well in this market, it makes sense to have different perspectives. You don't necessarily, you know, get that just by watching my YouTube videos. You want to watch, you know, a variety of them and then decide for yourself what makes the most sense. But if you do like my YouTube videos, be sure to subscribe to this channel. Hit the notification bell to be notified of future releases. Like, comment, and all that great stuff. And stop by my Telegram group, like I said earlier. So, um, all right, I think that's where we'll leave things off today. I'll, we'll come back and in my Telegram, we'll be talking about um, what happened, right? So. I'm going to go to bed relatively soon and wake up and see what happened with the rate cuts, how um, good or bad it was for the market and how the market reacted. And remember that going into rate cuts, we might see the market start pumping. And generally speaking, if you see it pumping into rate cuts, it's likely that it'll start dumping afterwards. If it's dumping into rate cuts, it's a chance it might pump afterwards. So just be prepared for some insane volatility. 
that's all I can really say about that. All right, well, see you around.